um, you make the point that um, autos and cars are sort of the, the locus of all the discussion regarding the shortage, but it goes way beyond that, and it doesn't sound like you see relief next year, really. That is correct. So all end markets are feeling the constraints. Um, and so autos have the most noise in terms of where the uh, media reporting goes into. But there is not an end market we see that is not facing some type of shortage, some type of constraint as well. And that constraint has been growing for the last year. And uh, we expect as we look forward that through much of 2022, these constraints are going to stay. Yeah, you make the point five. I didn't realize this five consecutive quarters of unsupported backlog. This is a problem that didn't just show up overnight, right? Correct. Unsupported for me for us means what did not ship in the quarter that a customer wanted shipped in a quarter. And that number has continued to expand every quarter for the last five quarters. And Ganesh, I'm curious if you could just put this all in context for us. The inventory at the distributors was at 19 days. That is a record low, down from 20 days. But if you look at your plans and how you're addressing some of these supply constraints, what is it going to look like going into next year? So inventory distribution is, in fact, at historic lows. Uh, it usually should be in the 30 to 35 range. So at 19, it's very low. We've been adding capacity internally for the better part of the last uh, 12 months. It's coming online. You know, the fact that we're growing 26% year over year shows we've actually brought capacity on, shipped more product, and we will bring more on in 22 and into 23. But we can't keep up at the rate at which demand is going up. Demand is going up substantially faster than we're able to bring capacity online. And that is both our internal capacity as well as working with our partners on the external capacity through uh, the manufacturing supply chain. It's just demand is so strong, it is overwhelming any capacity increases we've been able to bring on. Good morning, Ganesh. It's Deirdre. You know, TSMC sounded a different note when it came to inventory and stockpiling, suggesting that it is starting to occur. And I just wonder, what is the risk that we could see a glut, not a shortage, a glut when supply chains get rolling smoothly again? You know, eventually that may happen. Uh, I don't see that in the near term. Uh, we still are you know, embroiled in a significant number of uh, customer escalations on shortages and, you know, major uh, program issues that they're running into. Um, you know, in any cycle, we know that supply will continue to grow and uh, demand at some point will begin to ameliorate. But uh, we're far from those two coming in balance. Uh, the imbalance has grown for five consecutive quarters. And as we look at the line of sight we have, into what capacity we're bringing on and others are bringing on, what demand is already on our books and what more we're expecting. We don't see that curve bending in much of 2022. Is it a, is it a, um, is it a dumb question to ask whether or not you'd prefer this environment to the old classic cyclical environment of gluts and, and price cuts? You know, a strong demand environment is always a great environment to be in. So in that sense, uh, I would much rather prefer this than other environments. That said, there's a lot of strain and stress on the organization and on our chain of partners and all of that in the problems we're trying to deal with. And of course, there's strain on our customers as well. So I would prefer that perhaps uh, it didn't have so much stress and strain, but a strong business environment is always a good business environment. All right. Uh, if, if only we had a little more balance, that, that'll take time. Ganesh, we really appreciate that kind of color. Really helpful uh, to our viewers. Thanks so very much. Great. Thank you so much.